Steve Xiao from Digital Asset. I'm here in Singapore in one of the most iconic places in Singapore. It's called Gardens by the Bay. And uh, I'm here to meet with one of the participants that took part in our hackathon. And we could not have picked a better place. This place is beautiful and it's one of the uh, top five, top three places that you have to see when you're in Singapore. And you can't miss it because if you look up, you're gonna see this, a huge surfboard in the air, in the sky. Um, it's one of our signature postcard uh, places. And uh, obviously uh, the gardens have its uh, uh, reason for, to be called a garden because if you look up, you're gonna see some pretty interesting looking trees. So I'm excited to meet with uh, Gaurav. I'm gonna meet him in there. And uh, we're gonna talk about demo. We're gonna talk about smart trade finance. And uh, most importantly, we're gonna talk about food. All right, join me, don't go anywhere. We recently invited developers from around the world to build any smart contract solution using DAML. We showed them the fundamentals and showed them how to use the SDK tools. The results were stunning. There were projects covering sustainable fishing, real estate, trade finance and more. Now I've traveled to where these developers are to meet them face to face and talk about them, their passion in software development, their demo projects, smart contracts and practically anything that motivates us, challenges us, and makes us human. This is Demo Conversations. Ralph! Hi! 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 Tali? Yeah. Uh, and that, that's uh, some naan bread rice, some curries, and some mint and uh, onion. Yeah. With oh popcorn. man. It's food for royalty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so, are you familiar with Nasi by now? Uh, not much. Yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's a Malay dish. Nasi means. Right? I think it's rice. Oh, rice. Right. Nasi is yeah, rice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nasi is rice. Uh, goreng is to fry. And, uh, nasi goreng will be fried rice. Okay. So nasi is rice. And uh, uh, lemak is. Uh, I think it's the chicken. The chicken. I, I don't think so, because chicken is ayam. Ayam, yeah. Yeah. Oh. There's no, there's no requirement that it must have chicken. Ah. But uh, I like it. I eat it, eat it growing up. Oh. And you'll find Chinese vendors selling it too, uh, typically for food like that. Like, um, have you had Prada? Yeah, like, like, yeah like many, many, yeah, many times. Yeah, the Prada, I, I prefer eating it from uh, the Indian vendor. Yeah. Right? Because if the Chinese try to make it, it wouldn't be as, <laughs> wouldn't be as tasty. Sure. So hey, dig in, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Hey, so you are from India, right? Yeah. Uh, born and raised in India. Yeah. And you came to Singapore for, for professional to, to go to work. Yeah. For yeah. professional work. Yeah. Mm. When did you come here? I came in uh, November 2018. And is your family here with you? Yeah, my immediate family, my wife, two kids. They That's are right, we talked about. Yeah. So your kids are enrolled in local schools? No, they didn't get that admission Okay. in the local schools. So they are going into the private ones. Have you always been in tech? Me? I am not always in tech. I started my, my working journey at the age of 12. Oh my! And after doing a lot of odd jobs for my formal education, so that I can fulfill the needs of my formal education, mm. then eventually I end up into the, the tech side in 2009. 2009. Yeah. Yeah. This is all in Delhi, right? Yeah, that, that's, that's all in there. Yeah. Oh wow. So the, the, in your hackathon project, you picked smart trade financing. You explained yeah. it to me very, very well. Mm -hmm. Did you have background in that? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you, because the way you describe it, it sounded like you have deep knowledge on like the middleman and all the process and all that in between. Yeah. So <clears throat> during my, my overall tenure, uh, I got a chance to work in one of the largest automobile ancillary 
company in India. Mm. So I was in their IT division. And for, the, for more than five years, we were building uh, the solutions around supply chain systems, the trade systems, how the transactions uh, involved in multi-party systems can be accomplished in an efficient manner. Mm. But the challenge that I foresee was uh, how to onboard all those parties on the same thing with equal trust and understanding. Yeah. Because ultimately, you will get a lot of integration challenges practically, technically. Along with that, uh, there is always a, always a issue of trust and understanding that why would I spend money for your system Correct. to integrate with it. Correct. Right? Correct. Because any system cannot be integrated with itself, right? Yeah. The other systems, they also have to have that adaptation for that system. Mm. But the domain knowledge I had uh, it was was great over there. I learned how these multiple parties actually interact, involve even the financial institutions, the financial entities, how they how they really bring up into the these transactions, how they add values, right? So from that background, I, I have I can blindly draw down the entire manufacturing assembly unit how you can run it. Yeah, yeah. In a simple flow, yeah. in a very layman language. Sure. So that's the experience I got. Ah, I see. <laughs> so before the hackathon, was that something to, in your mind that you have always wanted to like, solve or tackle? From those days, I I always wanted to you know solve this. Uh, how we can you know make these multiple parties collaborate uh, in a well-informed manner? Yeah so that they can trust and they can easily integrate themselves with each other, right? Yes. And there was another very interesting fact. The more multiple parties you have, the more trust issues you have. And to settle those trust issues, the more middlemen you need to have in your entire system. Yeah. And the more middlemen you need to have, the more money you have to spend to settle the entire end-to-end -end transaction. Yeah. Yeah. So from those days, I always wanted to solve one one thing for sure that somehow can we can we build something to cut down all those these middlemen and their commissions and the, those are very heavy, you know, yeah. from from three percent to fifteen percent. Yeah, it's very heavy, very big. Yeah, so that's right. If we can cut down uh, somehow, we can cut down the overall cost for both the parties. In that way, we can achieve some goods that can be sell to the end user with much cheaper price than what it is right now. True. Because ultimately the, the end user, the consumer pays the price, right? Nobody else. Yep. It's a saying on um, pass the savings to the consumer, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you have a little bit of knowledge on demo prior to the hackathon? No. Wow. I I was introduced in a tech talk about demo. Um, it was within a company where I, I came to know about Demel in that tech talk. Then I thought it was, well, wow, this is something. I, I really want to look into it because I'm following the blockchain space from <coughs> quite some time, more than three years. Mm. So I, I, I was quite aware about that how the things can be built. but. I didn't know before Demel that we can build something so easily, so yeah. quickly. Yeah. And the best part, what I really loved about it, you can spin off a full stack application in very short period of time. Yeah. In amazing. very short period. Of time. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 Or even if you don't need to roll the full entire working application, you can demonstrate the core functionality using you deploy your contacts from your Demel hub. You can demonstrate to anybody in the world. Yeah, yeah. You won't believe the first day I started understanding Daniel. To be very honest, I said, "What the heck it is? <laughs> Why? Because my entire journey is from an object-oriented background. Yes. I, whenever I start thinking about a problem, I always think about objects, classes. How can I correlate yeah. them? Yeah, yeah. With that mindset. That's right. And all of a sudden, you land up in a in an ecosystem where you have a functional programming, demo, which is itself. Yeah. 
and you are trying to understand that now so initially there could be a challenge because you will feel like oh there should be a class dot or the object dot yes. some function or property yes but you won't get it in demo yeah. yeah then you eventually think about it understand it okay forget about this this is a script that i am writing actually yes and what i need to understand is that i'm calling this script into another script into another script if yeah. with that mindset i started and eventually it end up with a with a confidence that wow i can do something in that yeah and that's the great part it yeah. was so easy to learn it was very easy to learn demo and more importantly it was so easy to implement it and demonstrate it to the world yeah that was a beauty yeah. about it so smart trade finance uh well, what you did was you built a a contract that would facilitate which side did you start from the buyer or the other or the seller side or was it both uh, <clears throat> i started from from the seller mm -hmm. so basically uh, when a seller wants to sell something and a buyer wants to buy something first of all they they find themselves in an arrangement yeah. that, okay i am ready to buy so that is a letter of intent or something yes that i want to buy or a po is raised yeah a purchase order is raised so the buyer raised the purchase order and the seller accepts it okay considering the terms that okay we agreed upon this quantity this amount this price these are the rates so that's the first part in the real world it comes from both sides right the buyer can say i want to buy things from you the seller can say hey would you like to buy my product yeah. right? yeah. it could be both yeah it could be initiated from both parties yeah okay okay because as a seller i want to sell to as many people as i can sure as a buyer i want to buy from as many uh, sellers with a competitive price yes that's right that's right okay so when they come into that arrangement then the the uh, seller uh, the buyer actually the importer it first uh, sends a po uh, which the seller has to accept yep once the seller accepted that then it comes down to the further transactions that happens that then the buyer goes to the bank to accept, arrange a letter of credit yeah the seller <coughs> is waiting for that uh, letter of credit so that once that letter of credit is received the seller can represent that letter to his bank yeah based on the acceptance of both the banks that okay we agreed upon these term and conditions yeah. defined in the letter of credit so there's a bank on the on the seller side there's a bank on the buyer side. buyer side and then also you need to involve government agencies like the the port authorities like the customs uh, and the, the goods department the, sure. the tax department sure they are all also come into this picture yeah along with that even for that there are so many middlemen for example like you as a businessman you don't have that much credit worthy profile but you sure. want this deal to be cracked out yeah so then you present your case with the help of a middleman or an agent which we call them uh, like the trade finance agents yeah what they do on the behalf of the their client they represent the case the the transaction to the bank and based on their uh, mm. uh, based on their offerings uh, so then the bank may charge higher rates based on those offerings they get them that credit letter of credit interesting yeah and that middleman also charge the, oh, sure. the uh, buyer or the yeah. seller so these are the this this middleman will be the the party with the deep pockets to be yeah. able to guarantee yeah, yeah. if anything goes wrong yeah for a price for for a, for, price. For a price. price sure for sure mm, interesting interesting job and the <laughs> same thing happens both sides actually yeah and also you will have to consider the logistic uh, companies in between and there <clears throat> are so many dependencies so the overall end to end transaction a one transaction is in itself a very complex system so wow. much paper trail so much uh, the, the paper moves from so many hands that it's very complex yeah. because everything is a 
so every the, the whole process is a step by step process yeah it, every step has its own sla because of the dependencies on multiple parties right yeah yeah so that's where actually the whole time and more importantly the the most difficult part in this whole process is that there is no transparency ah nobody knows that's an issue where is the paper trail stuck or going huh because yeah. you don't have that transparency you cannot any any point of time you cannot say how long will it take actually yes yes right. and it's a, it's a, this touches on the concept of like observers right you yeah. you have the right business right to look at yeah. certain things but not other things so you can set them as uh, i need to look at this shipment but you don't have to know the factory and how much money was transacted yeah. but you do need to know that it's coming on this date this much quantity correct and all that it's interesting correct yeah, and demo helps with, with the yeah. observer part of it mm -hmm. and the fact that you can control the that uh, uh, authority and authorization down the chain and fine tune it mm -hmm. uh, is it, incredibly important the bank needs to know uh, financial matters yeah uh, uh, the middleman may not need to know they just need to be able to stand in the middle the logistics have no business knowing how much money is transacted between they should concern only about the correct. cost what is the package they are receiving that they need to deliver yeah 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 correct but apart from that so this is a limited liability or the need to know how basis yeah. business should be there that's right that's right and this way it has been implemented in a way that we can give a transparency from end to end yeah we can drop down or reduce the number of uh, middlemen correct reduce the number of uh, the, the number the amount of fee or the payment that's right and yeah. you you are reducing you, you, your solution what it highlighted too was the reduction of potential errors of fraud yes because there's no transparency no transparency right so it's very easy for anybody in the middle to screw up or yeah for fraud to be committed actually this happens practically I'm, I'm sure then you buy insurance to cover the fraud correct there's more middlemen <laughs> so Gaurav hey thanks for um, taking time eating with me I hope the food was good yeah no, great, no, no worries. great conversation and thank you Steve yeah. uh, thank you for giving me time on this uh, short talk uh, it was a great opportunity for me to have a conversation with you absolutely yeah. absolutely we'll, we'll, if you come to the US uh, uh, I'll take you out and ah, we'll great. do this again yeah I will thanks <laughs> eventually thanks awesome. bye